<laughs> now, well, those two, Vicar, has been a special guest this morning. He's a friend of mine. Please give him a very warm welcome. It's Andrew Cowell, so you yeah. Welcome to the show. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> And I know more than anyone how much he hates doing this kind of stuff. Uh, in his day job, Andrew runs a computer company. But you're going to know him uh, through, well, of late, much sadder circumstances, as Andrew uh, was the partner of the late boys' own singer Stephen Gately, who died seven months ago while the couple were on holiday in Mallorca. Nervous? Yes, lots. <laughs> lots, lots. Although, I've seen you doing a few things. You, 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 yeah. I think you've done brilliantly. Well I'm, well, I'm hoping this is the last, and um, we get to talk about my, my lovely husband's book, a little bit, um, the Tree of Seasons, which and, is and also, what I'm doing this for. That's why I'm subjecting myself to this. So. Well, and, well, and also we can talk about lots of other things as well. Yes. And I think you're going to have something to say on, sure, on all of yeah. them, hopefully. Far too much opinion. Um, now, you are here, as you said, to talk about this. This is called The Tree of Seasons. It's a fabulous children's novel written by Stephen. And I suppose that, well, the first question is, did he actually finish it? Yeah, he finished the story. Um, actually, it's almost poetic because he finished it to the day. I mean, he... It, one of the reasons we were out celebrating that night, we'd gone out to Mallorca for the month, he'd given himself a deadline to complete the book, he'd been writing it for four years, there was no publishing deal, so there's no real formal deadline, he was just doing it Something for fun. Something he wanted to do, yeah. yeah. And then that day he'd come to a conclusion on the ending, cos he'd been struggling with quite how it was going to end. I think, I suppose lots of people get that with, with a book, you know, it's, you, you need a good ending for your story. And um, he'd found the end of the story, but he hadn't got round to typing it up, so we'd been talking about it all day. I had some handwritten notes, and in the end we had to just complete the last chapter for him. But, um, but I knew it was going to happen, at least. So I had a, you know, a load of bullet points I was able to give. And if, if you were to describe it, I mean, Harry Potter is a sort of... Oh, a, there's yeah. a, there's, you know. I mean, Harry Potter has broad appeal, and this book has broad appeal. So, you know, it's for kids or adults, um, definitely. But Stephen used to say... You say it kids, what, 11, 12, yeah. 10, 11, 12, something like that? If you're 11, 12, then read it yourself. If you've got a 5-year-old, 4-year-old even, as long as, as long as they're a bit brave, Mummy and Daddy can read them at bedtime. It's perfect bedtime reading. There's 22 chapters, so, you know, one chapter a night or two chapters a night is just right. There is a chance they might go to bed with nightmares, though. No, oh. they wouldn't go to nightmares. <laughs> it's got the odd witch in it, you know. It's, it's very... If they, like, if, you can, if they can watch Doctor Who, they can read the book, okay. you know, they can hear the story. But it's great for adults as well. I, I took a young nephew to see the first Harry Potter film and he was totally traumatised by the <laughs> bankers <laughs> at Gringotts. It was one of the happiest days what of my life. <laughs> um, is there more work from Stephen that we don't know about that may one day either come into print or onto CD? There's nothing else he's written. I mean, he didn't want to be a writer. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't that he wanted to be an author. He had one particular story in his mind. He wanted to get that story out. It'd been kicking around his head for a long time. He had lots of spare time. I gave him a big, shiny laptop and he tapped away at it. So this, this, is, this was his novel. I mean, had he lived... And this, this had been the success what it looks like it's going to be. I mean, it looks like it's, it's headed for a bestseller at the Comes moment. Comes out in a few hours' time, if I Yeah. Um, and then the, I'm sure he would have happily penned a sequel. Um, and he'd have had big plans for it. Probably a musical that Janice would have loved. That Janice would have loved. <laughs> 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 you would have loved music, musicals, wouldn't you, Janice? And then, um, and, you know, and, and maybe a movie or something. But, um, but no, this was his one story. Okay. Okay. Don't and is it true that Stephen used to interrupt you when he was writing, when you were together? Yeah, well, he, he, he always was very excited about it. So when he came, to, when he, you know, when he did a, a, a little block, he'd come and want to tell you about it. And maybe out of context, because maybe you hadn't spoken about it for a few days, so there were bits in between, and you weren't quite sure what was happening, but you'd have to nod and smile. <laughs> but actually, <laughs> the, this, the, trip that we took to, um, the trip we took to Mallorca uh, for the month, it was basically a working holiday. So we were planning to spend the whole month there in our, in our house. And um, Stephen was going to finish the book, and I was there because I had loads and loads of work to do. <laughs> programming, technical things, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geek. And um, so I'm programming away. Stephen sat over my shoulder. Baby, I've decided Gridelda's going to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, interesting. OK. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to think, uh, where was my train of thought? <laughs> but that's important now, because without that, Without those interruptions, I wouldn't have been able to complete it, and it, it's important for him that I have, so... Now, there's, there's something I, I know that troubles you, and I'm not massively keen on talking about it, but yeah. I think we owe it to the people, because I know a lot of them felt very angry. And that is how you were dealt with and how Stephen was dealt yeah. with by the media in the aftermath there. I mean, Jan Moyer was, was one that stood head and shoulders above the others for, for being hideous, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you know yourself. I mean, you read a lot of papers, as we will do on the show today. Um, the press isn't always right, and, and there's lots of rumour and speculation in there. It was pretty horrid in the few days after. I mean, they were looking for some sensation. When someone dies young, they, they, especially a celebrity, they assume there's drugs and things. Yeah. 
They, they looked for scandal wherever they could. And they didn't find it. Um, and after a few days, they went away with their tails between their legs and actually started reporting facts as they, as they emerged. Did it, did it get in the way of, of your grieving? And the, and I, was, I, no, I was a prisoner in our home in, in Mallorca. Uh, I had 40 um, paps outside the front door. I couldn't even go onto our terrace to see the sea. I, I, what I desperately wanted to do, we fell in love with this place because of the beautiful bay. I wanted to sit there, look at the sea, feel the, you know, the breeze, and try to connect with Stephen and connect with you know, the world and, and his soul and things, and try to understand what happened. But instead, I was locked away with the shutters closed, with these, uh, and they were like animals, and they chased us if we tried to leave. It was really foul. And, and I know um, when we bumped into each other a couple of months back, at that point, in London, you hadn't even gone back to the home that you and, Sh and Stephen shared yeah. in, in the capital. You done that? Well, I went back straight after the funeral, and because I'd been trapped in Mallorca, and then flown straight to Ireland for the funeral, it was actually great to be home. But um, after a few days, I found that it took me so long to leave the house in the morning because I was just... Uh, I'd get ready to leave, you know, put your face on, your outdoor face, and then I'd fall to pieces before I could leave the house and spend another hour trying to get ready again. And um, that actually, the, there are, there's, there's too many happy memories there to want to sully it by starting sad, there again. Yeah. It's a big house. It was too big for the two of us and so without just, Stephen. Just it's... Walked well, away, my sister really. lives there, um, but uh, it will be sold at some point, yeah. Okay. Listen, it is great to have you here. No, thank you. I hope you enjoy Thank you for experience. having me. I'm hoping, it's a pleasure. I'm hoping this Secret. Irish coffee is going to help. <laughs> <laughs> you as well. Eh? This is something you have a habit now. Uh, we had Larry Love from the Alabama Three here, and the thing that I wasn't allowed to tell the viewers at home is I know he had a rather large nip of brandy to, as he said, take the edge off the morning while he was here. Very rock and roll, Jenny. Yeah, very rock and roll. Now, here's what's in store on today's show, then. Uh, after the break, a 